Thanks for contacting Wave Support. I see from your case request that you have a post refractive surgery patient that's struggling with the over refraction and has some uh, post fitting glare issues. So just a couple thoughts as you know when I get a number of these post refractive surgery patients you'll tend to get some weird over refractions um, you know whether you're fitting with a soft lens or a hard lens they seem to be pretty unpredictable and I think basically what happens is you wipe out this uh, the, the nice smooth cornea internal lenticular cylinders start to come through, creating some really weird overfractions. Uh, second thought about this, if you look especially at this right eye, we have a decentered optical zone. Uh, here's the visual axis and we have a decentered optical zone. So I would predict, looking at these corneas, they're probably going to run into some uh, haloing issues just from the fact that we see the transitional film in that cornea. And so even though you're trying to keep a nice vaulting surface over the top of this, you still have a cornea that's structurally altered and structurally irregular in nature. So I would keep it glare free. So I, instead of just using a scleral lens um, as the initial design here, you know, where you sort of vault the cornea and you try to use a tear, um, tear film or tear layer to create this smoothing surface, I'd be more inclined to try the uh, touch uh, approach and try to smooth out some of those areas that are more easily faulted by the cornea that are over fractured. So I personally find that sometimes seeing these patients with an odd cornea design in such a um, corner tends to at least give me a little bit easier to work with, especially if you start getting some weird cylinder over fractions. I, I tend to find that putting tear or, or cylinder over fractions on the corneal lens tend to turn into something that's more predictable and the house cuff We look at putting together a, a possible test for you here. I basically went to about a dozen of those in the event for the present uh, immediate side here. And I set my anchor points here with the lens uh, touch. I tried to mimic the, the uh, anchor points and try to get the, the right over the top of the anchor points on the uh, lens right over there. And of course, you get the centered optical zone. Um, you might be allowed to see a little different. Uh, zone on this left side here, but the, just for simplicity's sake, I went to a freeform design and put a little center and then put just a slight thickness of an arbitrary position there. And you see this actually keeps uh, the crown from rising. Now if you look at the back surface of that lens, you'll see that there are some areas that are bumped up a little bit here. And if you're concerned about these little areas, you could actually go to a device here. Um, the concept here is it's a little bit of that kind of smooth softening that goes back into the transition and then I tried to have some nice alignment back all the way around I actually just looked at a nice central area that was more of the one that was slightly more pinched down like this and then by putting this lens up top and the over refraction right over the top of that and then incorporating some of the nice smooth over refraction here um, you can add some sensation and nice glare to the lens and the anchor points same thing with the other eye start dealing with any comfort issues with these patients, keep in mind that axial tends to represent the central cornea a little bit more precisely and not as um, accurately out here in the peripheral cornea, whereas tangential tends to look very nicely or very closely at these outer areas. And so if you kind of notice the differences, here's that axial design. 
let me switch over to tangential. Right away, you'll see the lens is a bit steeper. So uh, the tangential design is a little steeper, or excuse me, the axial design is a little steeper than the tangential designs. And so tangential, though, since you're going to be really uh, getting a pretty nice uh, even alignment out here in this area, sometimes it takes just a little bit more comfortable lens for that patient. So uh, keep that in mind when we're treating this patient. And then, of course, uh, adding the overcorrection or even here through a catheter. Now, if you're going to go with a with this type of design as opposed to the, as a opposed to the Nugent, you may, before you put that cylinder overcorrection in, you can go ahead and make a nice uh, octagonal design, um, put it on there, and then kind of go from there. And one other thing I tend to try to do before I treat these patients is for future reference. Uh, I tend to, before I put this in these patients, I tend to take a known spherical lens, like a traditional round sphere cap that I see on the cornea, and sort of measure to see if I get some kind of uh, overcorrection on that patient. And if I do get some spherical overcorrection, I can incorporate that right into my design, right from the start, as a tool to then use in trial lens beta. I can also use that same little tool here to add in an initial spheral cylinder overcorrection if I have to. And that quite often gets me to a point where they think we are closer to that final design. Well, with that, I think you'll do well with this patient. Um, I think it would probably going to take a little trial and error. And I've had a couple of these where I just banged my head against the wall, but just uh, keep at it. Don't get too frustrated, and I think you'll do well. Well, once again, thanks for contacting the Wave Support, and have a great day.